For all you Volkswagen Audi fans, this is your dream car. Look at that powerful engine. All right. Thumbs up. Oh, he's got a buddy in front of him. We're at my garage and testing facility. Let's see what we're rolling out behind the door today. Looks like we've gotten ourselves an Audi A5. Lucky me, that's the second Audi I've had this month. Last one was the TT RS Turbo. We'll have a link for that video coming up after this video. In the meantime, this is a very nice looking car, especially with this blue metallic paint. It's no secret that four-door sedans aren't selling too well. People are switching over to SUVs for the cargo carrying capacity. Audi solved that problem on this A5 Sportback. It looks like a sedan on the outside. But with the hatchback, we're not supposed to say the word hatchback. Hatchbacks don't sell. Hatchbacks are what you get on cheap economy cars. If it's an expensive car, we have to call it the Sportback. In any case, with the sport back, you have lots of capacity for cargo in the rear, and if you lower the second row seats, like so, now we can haul even more stuff. But again, on the outside, we get the classy looks of a nice German sports sedan. Works for me. Of course, you might be asking yourself how much this is. Audis are never cheap. Here's the base price, cool 42 grand. Go down some of the options. And there's your total tab. But if you want this particular one, you're out of luck. Like it says, company vehicle for VIPs like me, not for sale. But I'm sure the dealer's got a lot more if you go down and look. Like most expensive German cars, we get expensive exotic headlights. So we're going to take these out in the dark and see what they do. We'll do that right now. It's dark enough. Let's take these lights out and see what they do. Look pretty bright to me. Here we have the lights on the wall 100 feet away. This is low beam setting. Very bright lights, good wide spread, but riding a bit low to the ground, about 12 inches. Go to high beam, big improvement. Here we have the brights on the building 300 feet away with a chain link fence in between. Excellent height, excellent spread, good output. Certainly no complaints here. Go to low beam. Goes out about 180 feet on the left and 260 on the right. More than adequate for city driving. But on the back country roads, you'll want to do this. By the way, I really like the way this interior lights up. You can see all of the controls, even the minor ones on the steering wheel, on the side. But then that's what we're paying for, right? These headlights do a great job of lighting up road signs, even a mile down the road, even on low beam. On backcountry roads, you might notice when you enter dips on low beam, the lights have a way of disappearing in the pavement. So, on roads like this, you want to keep the brights on. Unless you want to hit an antelope or a bear. Under the hood, we have a proven 2-liter 4-cylinder used by the Audi and Volkswagen people since the beginning of time. Very nice engine. This turbocharged version puts out 252 horsepower hooked to a 7-speed automatic transmission. And if you don't want to put this 7-speed S-Tronic, as they call it, in the automatic mode, you can shift manually with the paddle shifters on the steering wheel, which is a far better place to put them than the Italians so will put them on the steering column. They belong on the wheel. Thank you, Audi, for getting it right. Here's the clean fuel economy. We'll be racking up some miles to see what we get. By the way, this is all-wheel drive, so you get traction on both the front wheels 
and the rear wheels. Great for driving in snow and the rain. What's not so great for driving in the snow and rain, you have this body work I call the dirt shelf. You have all the debris that builds up here and down in here when you get out, it rubs on your pants. Which is why I'm wearing my cami jammies here. It's a good idea to keep some rags in the car so you can wipe this down in bad weather. A lot easier than using your pants. So let's hop in, look at the cabin. And I must say, Audis make some of the nicest interiors in the industry. They never fail. Materials and workmanship, excellent. What really impresses me about this car is the attention to detail. All the instruments and controls are exactly where they need to be. And all the controls and buttons are the exact size they should be. Like these steering wheel controls, large enough to use when wearing gloves. A very simple to use climate control system. Not the largest navigation screen I've ever used, but adequate enough. And very easy to use, too. I didn't have to look at the owner's manual once. Here's the control knob, which is a lot easier to use than some of the other German manufacturers offer. Just press the menu button, then turn the knob. And take your choice. Driving modes, comfort, automatic, dynamic, individual programs. And this system actually works quite well, unlike other manufacturers who have similar systems that don't work very well. As we'll find out when we do some driving later on in the video. Here's your conventional screen if you don't want to look at the speedometer. You can get more information at the press of a button. And if you want, at the press of a button, there's a heads-up display that reflects into the windshield. It's my camera that's out of focus, not the display. Or if you don't want it, just turn it off. It would be nice if the glove box was bigger, but it's not. It doesn't hold very much. You have to take the owner's manual out if you want some room. Some extra storage between the seats. These sun visors do slide to block out sun on the side windows. Like so. You'd be surprised the number of cars that don't do that. I'm going to deduct one point for that small glove box that still gives 99 points out of 100 in my book. This concludes the first half of the video where we do show and tell. Now for the second half, we're going out and do some driving. And according to the computer, the previous drivers racked up 566 miles and averaged 24.6 mpg. We're going to switch over to the short-term memory, set the computer to zero, and do a quick freeway test. The outside mirrors on this vehicle are way too small to see vehicles to your side. If it wasn't for the little radar light, give me a heads up. You could end up hitting somebody. We really need bigger mirrors. We completed our trip. Let's take a peek at the figures. 27.3 mpg at around 65 to 70 miles per hour. Not bad. I've got another 15 miles to go on these backcountry roads. Let's see if I can up the fuel economy a bit. All right, we're done. Let's take another peek. Oh, we got it to 28. Not bad. Looks like we bumped it up to 28. Oop, 27.9. Pardon me. By the way, if you do lots of highway driving, you'll be happy to know you actually have two navigation screens. The one we showed you earlier, and you can pull it up on the dash, too. One for your left eye, one for your right eye. The wonders of technology. Since this power steering is electric, it doesn't have much feel. On the other hand, the response is absolutely perfect. Any input you put in the steering wheel, the tires respond immediately, and that's what's important. Again, that Audi attention to detail. 
this little turbo has got lots of power. Just press and go. Very smooth, too. And these brakes are absolutely perfect. Respond to all your inputs the way the steering does. Again, the Audi attention to detail. As we do in all my videos, we're going to take some speed bumps at 25 miles per hour to evaluate the suspension performance on impacts. And I'm going to cheat and put this in the comfort mode to get the best performance. And I see we have a nasty pothole or two from last week's rain. We might run over that one too. So here comes the big pothole. Wow, went right over it. I'm surprised. Speed bump number one. Pretty smooth. Number two. Extremely smooth again. Number three. And the big nasty one. Hang on. Some thumping from the tires, but didn't feel anything. This is a very excellent suspension and very comfortable in what they call the comfort mode. I put the suspension in dynamic mode, so let's take a corner in our little turning circle. A bit of body lean, but with good weight distribution and all-wheel drive. I don't think we're going to be able to spin this out. This is a very nice sports sedan. One of the reasons I like this Audi A5 provides the same performance you get off other German brands like Mercedes or BMW. It's just more pleasant to drive. Great for long trips, nice seats. If I was going to drive from Los Angeles to New York, this would be top on my list. Amazing pet from this little four-cylinder. The only thing I don't like, if you look up close, the way the dash reflects into the windshield when the sun is at certain angles. You'll get used to it. Right there and there. We're going to reset our fuel economy computer and do some freeway driving. Don't go away. We're coming to the end of our journey. We're going to pull over and see what our fuel economy reading is. I was getting 32 mbg for a while, but I guess we must have been going slightly uphill. Here are the figures. Take it for what it's worth. This is using premium fuel, of course. On backcountry roads, this vehicle really sticks to the pavement. Especially in dynamic mode. A true sports car hiding in sports sedan clothing. And the paddle shifters are just ideal for a road like this. I'm impressed. With the transmission, Set in the automatic sport mode. You really don't need manual paddle shifters. The computer is actually smarter than you are, always knows the right gear to engage in. But it's nice to have the paddle shifters there just in case. This engine has massive amounts of torque. I really like it. Who needs a V6? Hardcore mountain driving dropped our fuel economy, as you can see, 21.4. We're going to reset it and do one last highway trip. We're going to have the cruise control set at 75 miles per hour, just in case you're interested. We're at the end of our second fuel economy highway trip. There are the figures. 
I think that's the best we're ever going to see. Where did I say that last time? Our night trip tonight racked up 160 miles. Total this week is 344.9. Pretty close to my goal of 350 miles. So tomorrow the car is going back. I'm done with it. By the way, after I give this vehicle back to Audi in the morning, I'm going to pick up a Lexus RCF with a 467 horsepower engine in the afternoon. If you want to see that video in a couple weeks, you better subscribe or at least come back and visit us again. So what's my take after driving this vehicle for a week? Well, on the positive side, it's a fantastic ride. I'm really impressed. I hate getting rid of it. On the negative side, it's just too bad this thing has to be so bloody expensive. Getting up to 50 grand, wow. If you can't afford a new one, another trick is to wait till they get three years old coming off lease. Pick up one for around 40% off. A poor penniless peasant like me, that's the only way I could do it. In the meantime, here's some videos of other performance cars we've driven. Just click on the link and watch.